We are going to deploy our Spring Boot Bookstore API on AWS Cloud. We'll walk through the configurations required for our API development. In enterprise application, it's common to deploy on various environments like testing, UAT, and production. Spring Boot provides profiles to help manage environment-specific configuration. To deploy our Spring Boot application on AWS Cloud, we need to make some changes to support different environments. So far, we have been working on a local development environment. Now we'll prepare our application for deployment on a production environment. Let's start by creating environment-specific properties files. Navigate to Source, Main, or Resources folder. You'll see an application.properties file. As we have seen, this file currently holds all our configuration for the local environment. First, copy the application.properties file and create two new files, application-dev.properties and application-prod.properties. These files will hold this configuration specific to development and production environments respectively. I have created application-dev.properties file and it might look like this and similarly with application-prod.property file. To activate a profile, we need to modify the application.property file to specify which profile is active. Add the following line to activate the development profile. You can add spring.profiles.active equals to dev. When deploying to production, change to prod. This tells the Spring Boot to read configurations from the respective profile specific properties file. Let us also test if our profiles are correctly set up. Start by activating the dev profile. Run your Spring Boot application and check the logs. You should see something like this. The following one profile is active. If you have activated currently the dev right now, this confirms that the dev profile is activated. We'll prepare to deploy our application on AWS. Ensure that the production properties are correctly set in application prod.property file. To deploy to AWS, we would first create the AWS account. If you don't have already one, sign up at aws.amazon.com. In your AWS management console, go to RDS service by typing RDS in the search bar and selecting it from the list. Now, click on the Create Database button. This will take you to the database creation screen. On the Create Database screen, keep the default standard create option selected. Next, choose the database engine. For this tutorial, we'll select MySQL. Make sure to choose the free tier template under the template section to avoid any charges. Scroll down to the settings section. Here you'll need to provide a database instance ident identifier. For example, you can name it Bookstore DB. In the credential settings section, provide a username and password. For example, use root as the username and we would be using MySQL 123 hash as the password. Make sure to remember this credential as you'll need them later. Scroll down to the DB instance class section and keep the default setting. In the connectivity section, make sure to enable public access by selecting yes. This will allow your local machine to connect to the database. Next, scroll down to additional configuration. You can leave creating the database for now. We will connect the MySQL work branch from our local machine and we'll create the database. Once we have all the configuration set, click on the Create Database button at the bottom of the page. AWS will start creating your database instance, which will take a few minutes. After the database instance is created, you'll need to configure the security settings. Click on your DB instance identifier to open its details page. Find the security group section and click on the default setting group. This will take you to the security group settings. Click on Edit Inbound Rules, then click Add Rule. For the type, select MySQL Aurora. For the source, select Anywhere. Click Save Rules to apply the changes. 
Now, we will connect to AWS MySQL database from MySQL Workbench. In AWS RDS, we created a MySQL DB instance with an identifier, which we named Bookstore DB. Remember, this is not our actual database name. It's just an identifier for the MySQL database server. Now, find the endpoint and port information on your DB instance details page. The endpoint URL is crucial as we'll be using it to connect to our DB instance from the MySQL Workbench. Next, open up your MySQL Workbench on your local machine. On the home page screen, click on the plus icon to create a new connection. Here you need to provide the connection name, host name, username, so the username is the same as the setup for your RDS instance and the password, the same password you created during the RDS setup. Once you have entered all the details, click OK and then test connection to ensure everything is set up correctly. If the connection is successful, you'll see a confirmation message. Click OK to save the connection. Once connected, create a new database, open a new SQL tab and run the command create database bookstore. Execute the command and you should see a confirmation that a database was created successfully. We have configured MySQL settings in a Spring Boot application. We also need to make sure to set the embedded Tomcat server to port 5000. So, let's build a project which will create a jar file in the target folder. Then, open your browser and log into your AWS management console. Navigate to the Services tab and search for Elastic Beanstalk. Click on Elastic Beanstalk to open the landing page. Click on Create Application. Provide an application name such as Spring Boot Bookstore Application. Give a suitable environment name. We'll give it as Bookstore-API-Prod-ENV. In the Platform section, choose Java since we are deploying a Java jar file. For the platform branch, select Coreto 17 on 64-bit Amazon Linux 2023 and keep the default version setting as it is. Scroll down to application code and select upload your code. Give a version label. Uh, we will give it as Spring Boot label. Now, select local file and navigate to the target folder where your jar file is located and select the jar file. It is successfully uploaded. Now click on next button and let's configure service access. I would be using an existing service role. If you don't have already, please use the option create and use new service role. Keep EC2 pair as blank. Now, click on Next button and go to Setup Network and Database page. Select the default P VPC from the drop-down. In Instance Settings section, click on the Public IP Address checkbox and select all the availability zones for the instance subnets. In Database section, switch to Enable Database since we are using the database for our application and choose all the availability zone for the database subnets. Keep snapshot option as none. In database settings section, make sure you select engine as MySQL. Keep other settings as it is and now provide the username and password which we have provided while creating the MySQL database in the RDS service. For database deletion policy, we will select the option as delete since we want that whenever the elastic bin stock is terminated, it will also terminate the database. If you want, you can create the text as an identifier. So click on the next button and go to configure instance traffic and scaling. And leave all the configuration as it is. Then click on next and go to configure updates, monitoring and logging page where we will select health reporting as basic and keep all other settings as it is. Now, click on the next button to review all our configurations. All the configurations seems to be fine 
and now we will create the elastic beanstalk once the environment is created you will see the status is ok indicating that the deployment was successful your application name should be visible and the url will be provided to access your application now since our elastic beanstalk application and environment is up and running and we have got our endpoint we will test one of the api with postman so open up the postman and create a new post request to http and the endpoint which we have got with slash api and slash books as a suffix now add the request payload to the body as code name description image url and price and hit the send button you can see that you have got the response with status s200 ok and the response body so this is how we have completed our application development with spring boot api and also deploying the api on aws cloud thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video